the number of trips generated to a proposed development is essential for a traffic impact analysis or traffic impact study. And important part of that also is looking at the modes that may be using the site and also internal capture and pass by trips. And so we'll explain that in this video. Trip generation just generally is an estimate of the number of trips generated for a particular land use. And it's based on empirical data from decades of data collection across the United States. And the age, the quantity, and the geographical spread vary by the land use. Some land use categories have a lot of data elements and a lot of data points, and some have very few. So it really depends on the specific land use, how robust that data set is. It's based on an independent variable and so common one measures of independent variables are the square footage of a facility, the number of residential units. For a gas station, it's the number of fueling positions. So what is the, the key characteristic that is related to the number of trips generated for a land use? And ways that the impact of a development can be lessened include internal capture, and those are trips that remain within a development. So when someone visits multiple businesses without leaving the property, that's an internal capture. And a great example of these are, are large retail developments where you may have big box stores and restaurants and other specialty retail shops. Someone may come to that development and visit multiple businesses. And so it isn't generating all of those new trips. We can remove some of those trips because of that internal capture within the development. So that's one key way that, that the impact of a development can be lessened is by having multiple uses within one development. Another way that we can look at this is looking at the number of pass by trips. That's another way to lessen the impact of a development. And usually businesses, so, so certain types of businesses are more likely to generate pass by trips. And pass by trips are trips that are already on that road that's adjacent to the business. And when they visit that business, they do so by just stopping in to that business as part of a longer route. Uh, for instance, gas stations are very commonly have high pass by trip percentages. Many people will stop at a gas station just on their way somewhere else or on a trip. And so it's not generating a full new trip. Really, the main impact is just the turning movement in and out of that business. Coffee shops are another one, fast food restaurants or other businesses that typically have a high percentage of pass by trips. And again, the internal capture and the pass by lessens the impact of that development on traffic on the roadway network. And another area that can lessen the impact when we're looking at the vehicular network is if you have a multimodal split of traffic. So if some people will be walking, biking, or taking transit to that facility, that's gonna have a lower impact on that roadway network on the vehicular side on that adjacent network. ITE, the Institute of Transportation Engineers, is the primary source of trip generation data, and they provide this in the trip generation manual. There's a lot of land use types, some of the overall broad categories, residential, lodging, recreational, institutional, medical, office, retail, and services. So lots of different categories of land uses. And then within those broad categories, there are specific types of land uses that exist and that you will want to be specific for, for your analysis of a development. The process of estimating the trips from the ITE trip generation manual, we start with choosing the appropriate land use. So is this land use for the proposed development, is it consistent with one that is provided by ITE? We want to choose the appropriate analysis time period and independent variable. So we're looking at a weekday, a weekend, the morning peak hour, the afternoon peak hour, the peak hour of the generator, so the peak hour of that business, or is it the peak hour of the adjacent roadway? Lots of different categories to choose from for the time period. And then in the independent variable, there will often be multiple options for the land use. So is it is it overall gross square footage, or is it some other component of the business, which could be for a restaurant, the number of seats, for a gas station can be the number of fueling positions, and often multiple independent variables are available for selection by the analyst. Next is to estimate the exiting and entering trips through either average rates or an equation. So ITE will provide us a breakdown of how many trips are exiting or entering. 
And typically over a full day, it's going to be 50-50. Most people that come to the business or the development leave or vice versa. But in the peak hour, it can vary considerably. So a residential neighborhood, it could be that in the morning, 75% of people are exiting and only 25% of people are entering versus the PM, it may be the opposite of that. Another important aspect to consider, and ITU recommends this often, if you have a good local alternative, collecting data there are very valuable. So you're not looking at this nationwide set of data, you're looking at something that's more local and perhaps more representative of that type of business within the community. So collecting local data is always a recommended option and always something that can and should be considered. So when selecting whether to use the equation that's provided, and not all land uses have an equation provided, only ones that have meet a certain criteria, or the average rate. So you also have to check that that value is within the, the independent variables within the limits of the data. So for instance, if you were looking to build a 5,000 home development, ITE may not have a range of values that goes up to 5,000. This would be a huge development. And so you need to stay within the limits of the data or consider how those limits may impact the trips that you'll generate. So back to selecting the equation or the average rate, if the R squared is greater than 0.75, you should use the equation. That's what's preferred. R squared is a representation of how well the equation fit the data. So it, it's provided on all of the all the land uses that provide an equation also provide the R squared. So it's just as simple as looking at that value. If it's above 0.75, it means that equation is, is sufficient and should be used. Otherwise, you should use the average rate. And that can only be used if the standard deviation is less than 1.1 times the average rate. So we've got to do that small calculation as well and make sure that the average rate is acceptable to use as well. But the equation is preferred as long as that R squared value is adequate. So here's an example of trip generation. So this is for a development of 79 townhomes and we're looking at the dwelling unit as the independent variable. So they tell us here in, our, in the table, dwelling units, there's 79 of these. It fits under the land use code of multifamily housing mid-rise and that has a code number of 221 and these are townhouses. You can determine the total daily traffic is 582 trips. In the morning peak hour, so the AM peak, the estimate is 11 vehicles entering and 36 exiting. And that's what we would expect in the morning in a residential development, more people are gonna be leaving than coming. And we see the reverse of that in the afternoon where more people are entering the development, 34 vehicles entering versus 21 exiting. So overall in that peak hour, 47 trips are generated in the morning peak hour and 55 trips generated in the PM peak hour. Here's another much, much larger development. We see multiple land use codes and categories. So we have the land use code numbers here on the left and then the description in this section. So we've got a shopping center that's 9,000 square feet, a variety store of 7,000 square feet, automobile parts store, 7,000 square feet, and then three residential types here. So 155 units of a single senior adult housing, 360 units of multifamily mid-rise, and 221 units for a multifamily low-rise. So those are apartments versus townhomes. We have gener estimates for generating the daily trips, the morning peak hour, the afternoon peak hour, breakdowns for in and out of both of those categories. And so this is looking at each of those land use codes independently as if each one of those were standalone. But we know from the earlier discussion that you may have ways to reduce that impact. Primarily one of those is internal capture. And so we see this a breakdown here of, of the internal capture. And we also see the pass by trips here as well. So what this is doing, and there's there's guidance to go based on this, is that the internal capture is based on the each industry code or each land use code or category, and we're using they're using zero percent in the morning for internal capture, 
and then 34% and 43% in the afternoon. So those pass by trips are much more likely in the afternoon than in the morning. And then again, separately up here, the internal capture, this is how many trips we're estimating or were estimated as being captured internally within the development. So these are people who already maybe lived in one of the residential units going to that shopping center. And then these pass by trips are people who are on the roadway passing by and stopping. So it's not a full trip that was generated, it's somebody that was already in that area. And then we're going to come up with the net new external trips here. So these bottom line estimates are adjusted from these initial estimates, assuming all of those land uses were independent of each other, which we know is not the case. We know we're going to have some pass by trips for some of the land use types. We know we're going to have internal capture when we have a land use, a development that has multiple land use, multiple categories within it. And another example here, this is looking at a fast food restaurant without a drive through window. It's 3,000 square feet. The daily estimate is 1,352 vehicles. We have a weekday morning period and a weekday afternoon peak period. We're assuming an internal capture of 10% in the morning and 10% in the afternoon. And we see, well, there's only we're only looking at one land use code here, but the idea is the context here is provided within this larger development. So putting in one fast food restaurant a lot, some of those trips, and we're estimating here is 10%, 10% of the trips that would be generated for that fast food restaurant were already in the development. And so we're gonna subtract off those trips from our final estimate of our external trips. So here's our external trips. And then for fast food restaurants, those are ones that are highly likely to get pass by trips. And so 50% 50 in the morning, 55% in the afternoon, are going to be trips that are already passing by on that adjacent roadway. So the new trips are much lower than our initial estimate from the IT trip generation manual after we account for internal capture and pass by trips. And last one, here's an example of a property that's being developed of townhomes and retail space. And this one provided the rates First, so we have a table here showing the trip generation rates. We're looking at a weekday, morning peak, a midday peak, so that's our lunch peak, and then afternoon peak. And we have both the inbound and the outbound for each of these. And we see the rates here. So for these 32 townhomes, the rates that would be applied for the day are 2.91 trips per townhome. Point 0 0.06 for the morning peak that are entering, 0.38 in the morning peak that are leaving, 0.28 entering in the midday, 0.25 leaving in the midday. So those are pretty well balanced. That midday peak, we're going to assume roughly the same amount of vehicles are coming into the development as leaving. In the afternoon, 0.34 trips per townhome entering, 0.19 leaving. And when we multiply by the actual size of each of those, the 32 units and the 27,400 square feet of retail space. These are the values we're gonna get in this bottom table here. So these are the total additional traffic generated is in this bottom row of this table.